This project is sponsored by PCBWay. They have all the services you need to create your project at the best price, whether it's a school project or complex professional project. On PCBWay you can share your experiences or get inspiration for your next project. They also provide completed surface mount SMT PCB assembly service at the best price and ISO 9001 quality control. Uh, visit www.pcbway.com for more services. Hello. The sun provides more than enough energy to meet the whole world's energy needs and unlike fossil fuels it won't run out anytime soon. Solar power cell is a renewable CO2 free power source that converts sunlight into direct current electricity. Solar irradiation is the power per unit per unit area received from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation and is typically expressed in the in watts per square meter. This data is used to determine the potential for solar power generation and it helps in designing and optimizing solar panels and other solar energy systems. The simplest way to measure solar radiation is to connect a low value resistor in parallel with the solar cell and measure the voltage drop across the resistor. The current flow is roughly proportional to the illumination intensity. However, this method is not precise enough and fortunately for a very low price uh, we can find a current sensor board with excellent features. Uh, the current sensor module, utilizing Hall effect principle which voltage is produced from the movement of current within the region of magnetic field. The voltage produced by Hall effect is directly proportional to the applied current making it suitable to estimate the applied current from the voltage sensed. This project was originally presented on the Solar Duino site and all credits go to, to them. Uh, on the site you can also find detailed instruction as well as link where you can get all the components. Uh, I made minor adjustment to the code based on the components I had at the moment of building the device. Instead of 16 on 2 LCD display shield, I use a standard 16, 16 on 2 I2C LCD display with a separate initialization button. The device is extremely simple to make and consists of only a few components. Uh, solar cell, preferably with a voltage of 0.5 volt and short circuit current of 0.5 to 1 ampere. If we don't have information about this value from the manufacturer we can determine it with the following procedure. We connect the solar cell directly to the ammeter and point it in the direction of the sun so that the light falls on it at an angle of 90 degrees. The current that is read at this moment is called short circuit current. Then this value is entered into the code. Next other parts. ACS712 current sensor module rated at 5 amperes. Uh, 16 on 2 LCD uh, display with I2C communication protocol. Next button and two resistors. The sensor is connected to the solar. Uh, the sensor is connected to the solar cell with relatively thick and short wires to avoid interference and loses. The voltage output of the board is connected to the power supply and the A1 analog input of the Arduino. Now let's consider the way of working with the device as well as its functioning in real conditions. Immediately after turning on the device we need to cover the upper sensor and press the button and after that initializing and calibration of the sensor take place which lasts about 5 seconds, then the message offset down appears briefly, which means the sensor is calibrated. So next we, we can direct the cell towards the sun. In this case now I will use this lamp instead the sun.
After that, the, the data obtained from measurement is displayed on, on the screen. The first row uh, shows the amount of current generated by the panel, in our case 0.25 amperes, and the current power delivered by a panel with an area of one square, uh, square meter, in our case about 20, uh, 200 watts per meter square. Uh, the second row, the second row shows us how many watt hours are generated from the beginning of measuring until the moment of reading. Now it's, it is three watt hour per meter square. Uh, in this way, knowing the number of sunny days during the year for a selected location, we can relatively accurately calculate how much electricity would be produced annually with a given area of solar panels. Now let's see how this would look outside in real sunlight exposure. As we can see, the energy generated depends significantly on the angle at which the sunlight is received. Uh, general rules for the physical placement of solar panels are that the vertical angle of the panels should be approximately the same as the longitude of the given location and the orientation should be sold, but not magnetic sold that the compass show, but the sort with calculated magnetic declination. And finally a short conclusion, this is a very cheap and simple to make but extremely useful instrument, especially when designing such system to simulate and provide feasibility study of a location or site whether it is viable to install solar photovoltage system.